To get you started, you will be given some supplies to take home. We should point out that the supplies your home infusion company provides may be different from those used in the hospital or shown in this video. It's important to regularly flush the pick line. That will help keep it from clogging. You must flush the line before and after medication is given, before starting and after ending an infusion, and after every 12 hours that the pick line has not been used. First, we'll show you how to flush before and after medication or an IV infusion is given. You'll use what's called the SASH technique. SASH stands for saline, any infusion, whether a continuous IV or medication, saline, and heparin. The first step is to get your work surface ready. The surface needs to be cleaned with disinfectant wipes before you start. Cover it with a clean paper towel or chucks pad. For this procedure, you will need two 10 milliliter pre-filled normal saline syringes, your medication infusion, one pre-filled heparin syringe, alcohol preps or chlorhexidine swabs, a box of clean gloves, and a sharps container. The first step is to wash your hands with soap and water for 30 seconds and dry with a clean paper towel. Or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer and let air dry. Put on a pair of clean gloves. Now we'll perform the first sash step, saline. Remove the cap from the saline syringe. Apply gentle pressure on the syringe plunger to push out the air bubble. Clean the end cap, also called a hub, with an alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab. You must scrub the hub for 30 seconds, allow to air dry. Then using a clockwise motion, screw the tip of the syringe into the end cap of the catheter. Make sure to unlock the catheter clamp. Once the syringe is securely attached, flush the contents of the syringe through the catheter by using a gentle stop and start motion. You don't want to flush the entire syringe contents in one push. Vigorous flushing will damage the pick line. The saline should go into the catheter easily. If it's hard to push the saline in, stop and contact your doctor or home care nurse. When you are done, unscrew the used syringe from the cap and discard it into the sharps container. Next is any infusion. With another alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab, scrub the hub again for 30 seconds. Using a clockwise motion, screw in the end of the IV medication tubing. Now start the infusion. Remove your gloves, discard, and wash your hands. Once the infusion is complete, you're ready to perform the second S step, saline. Wash or disinfect your hands and put on clean gloves. Scrub the hub with an alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab for 30 seconds and allow to air dry. Remove the cap from your second saline syringe. Apply gentle pressure on the syringe plunger to push out the air bubble. Using a clockwise motion, screw the tip of the syringe into the end cap of the catheter. Once the syringe is attached securely, flush the contents of the syringe through the catheter by using a gentle stop and start motion as discussed before. When you're done, unscrew the used syringe and discard it into the sharps container. Scrub the hub again with an alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab for 30 seconds. This brings us to the final step, H for heparin. 
Open the packaging containing the pre-filled heparin syringe. Remove the cap from the syringe and push the plunger to release any air bubbles. Twisting clockwise, screw the syringe into the cap. With a gentle stop-start motion, push the contents of the syringe into the catheter. When you're done, twist counterclockwise to unscrew the syringe from the cap and lock the catheter clamp. Discard the syringe in a sharps container. Remove your gloves and wash or disinfect your hands. When a catheter is not in use, it must be flushed every 12 hours with normal saline and then with heparin. PICK lines can either be single, double, or triple lumen catheters. We will show you how to flush a single lumen pick. These steps, just remember, must be repeated for the other lumens if you have a double or triple lumen line. Here's what you'll need for a single lumen pick. One syringe pre-filled with 10 milliliters of normal saline. One syringe pre-filled with heparin alcohol preps or chlorhexidine swabs, a box of clean gloves, and a sharps container. If you have multiple lumens, you will need one syringe of normal saline and one syringe of heparin for each lumen you flush. First, wash or disinfect your hands. Then, put on clean gloves. Open the packages containing your saline and heparin syringes and place them on your work surface. Scrub the hub with an alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab for 30 seconds. Remove the cap from the normal saline syringe. Apply gentle pressure on the plunger to push out any air bubbles that may be in the tip. Then, using a clockwise motion, screw the tip of the syringe into the end cap of the catheter. Open the catheter clamp. Once you are sure the syringe is attached securely, Flush the contents of the syringe through the catheter using a gentle stop-start motion. Unscrew the used syringe from the cap and discard it in a sharps container. Scrub the hub with an alcohol prep or chlorhexidine swab for 30 seconds. Remove the cap from the heparin syringe and push the plunger to release air bubbles. Using a clockwise motion, screw the syringe tip into the cap. With a gentle stop-start motion, push the contents of the syringe into the catheter. Using a counterclockwise motion, unscrew the syringe from the cap and lock the catheter clamp. Remember, if your pick line has more than one lumen, you must repeat all of these steps for each lumen of your catheter. Be sure to discard all used syringes in a sharps container, then remove your gloves, and don't forget to wash your hands. Sometimes, even if you have done everything correctly, problems can occur. If you have any of the following conditions, contact your doctor or home care service provider or go to the emergency room. Fever, pain in the pick line arm, Bright red blood under the pick line dressing. Redness, tenderness, or swelling in the arm with the pick line or at the pick line site. Other times to call your doctor or home care service provider or go to the emergency room include a tear or break in the pick line, leaking of IV fluid or medication from around the pick line insertion site. You cannot flush the pick line. More length of the pick line catheter is visible or the line seems to have pulled out partially or completely.